Chapter 8, Objects and Classes, Part 4. So the default constructor does not take any um, uh, parameters. If you do not supply any constructors, the compiler will make a default constructor automatically. It takes no parameters and it initializes all the instance variables. However, you can write your own default constructor that accepts no parameters and make it initialize all instance variables, as shown here. Here's an example of the cache register class showing the default constructor at line 13 and then the instance methods um, add item at line 23, get total at line 33, get count at line 42, and finally clear at line 50. The instance fields, item count and total price are at line 7 and 8. Com it's a common error to try to call the constructor, and you can't call the constructor like other methods. It's a special method that is invoked by the keyword new, and that's the only way it can be called. You can't call it from an existing object such as register one dot cache register. That will result in an error. But you can call it when by using the keyword new when you create a new object. Um, it's also a common error to declare a constructor's void, and this happens frequently for those students taking AP Computer Science. This is a common error on the AP um, exam that they put void in the constructor. Um, also, uh, in this case, they say public void class bank account, and this is an error for two reasons. Number one, if we're trying to write the constructor because of the word void, and number two, because of the word class. You don't include the word class in your constructor. Overloading is when we have multiple constructors that have exactly the same name. Of course they have the same name because um, uh, constructors all have the same name as the class, but they are different based on their parameter list. It's the same thing as overloading methods. You can create a method that has the same name as any other method, but differs in the, it has the same name as, as another method, but differs in the parameter list. In this example, we have a print method that takes a cash register object as a parameter. We have a print method that takes a bank account object as a parameter. We have a print method that takes an int as a parameter, and a print method that takes a double as a parameter. All four of these are valid in the same class. However, each one is called based on the argument list when the method is being called. We wrote the cash register class but we can't execute the class, it has no main method. We have to instantiate an object of the class inside the main method in order to run it. Um, we call this unit testing. Uh, if we test a specific unit before we combine it with a larger class, um, it says here, to test a new class, you can use programming tools that interactively create objects. We're, we're going to write our own. We're going to test our own uh, by writing our tester class with a main method. And notice here we call it public class cash register tester. That's very common. And we, we instantiate an object of type cash register in the main method. When you are testing a class, it's important that you test all methods, that you print expected results, and that you output the actual results and compare. So testing means that you have to say, what do you expect? What did you get? Does that match? And you have to try to test all lines of code to be thorough. So steps to implementing a class. And this is a nice little checklist for you. Um, I'm sorry that the slide has a, a couple of issues with formatting. Um, we get an informal list of the responsibilities of the objects. What is it going to do? Display the menu, get user input. We specify the public interface. What, ex what public methods belong inside the class. And then we document those methods by using javadoc comments. Then we determine the instance fields, what instance fields are required. Then we implement the constructors. And finally, we test the class. So those six steps to implementing a class are uh, a, a great model to follow. To repeat, number one, jot down what the responsibilities are of the object. What do we want it to do? Number two, specify the public interface. Number three, document the methods, the public interface methods with javadoc comments. Number three, determine the instance fields. Number five, implement the constructors. And finally, test the class in a tester method. To trace through objects, um, it's sometimes handy to use an index card for each object and then write down what the instance variables are on the front and then on the back 
how they're changing each time as you run through each line of code. Hand tracing is a very valuable technique. It just gets more complex when you have objects, which is why the author of our textbook suggests using index cards to trace through each object. Um, mutator methods, you when you access a mutator method, you want to keep track of the values in the instance variables. Um, again, this can happen on the back of those in index cards.